Hi Bella Mamas, today I want to talk about the difference between folate and folic acid. We've all heard about how important it is to get enough fol folate or folic acid during pregnancy, especially in the first few weeks to prevent birth defects such as spina, spina bifida. You may have also noticed that folate is sometimes called folic acid. In fact, most prenatal supplements will have folic acid in them instead of folate. So if you're like me, you're probably wondering what's the difference and why does it matter? Well, first up, folic acid is the synthetic form of folate, which means it's been manufactured in a lab, which isn't too surprising because most supplements that you find on the market today use synthetic vitamins and minerals because it's cheaper for the manufacturer to manufacture and sell to the consumer. But if that's not disturbing enough about folic acid, there's also emerging research to suggest that 4 in 10 people have a gene mutation that doesn't allow their bodies to metabolize folic acid at all, which means that their bodies can't recognize or use folic acid as a bioavailable nutrient. When I say bioavailable, I mean that the nutrient is in a form that your body can absorb and use, which means that your baby can use as well. But before you get overwhelmed thinking that you might fit into that category, there's two simple things that anyone can do to get enough folate during their pregnancy. And even if your body could use folic acid, it is a lot harder for your body to use folic acid instead of straight up folate in its pure and natural state from real food. So the first thing you can do is to make sure that your prenatal supplement has folate in it and not folic acid. It might cost a little more to get a good quality supplement that has folate, but it's an investment that your body and your baby will thank you for. During my pregnancy, I used Garden of Life raw prenatal and Naturello whole food prenatal. And I love both these brands even more because they had folate in them instead of folic acid. And I felt great taking both of them. There's a link to um, both of them in the article that I wrote about folate on my blog. And the second thing that you can do is to get more green leafy vegetables into your diet, so more beans and lentils, um, because all of those are the richest source of folate. As the name suggests, folate means foliage, so green leafies like spinach and kale and romaine, asparagus, avocado, broccoli, they're all really rich sources of folate. In fact, five asparagus spheres contain 25% of your daily folate requirement during pregnancy. So it could be as easy as chopping them up into an omelet or um, throwing them into a salad uh, for lunch or dinner. And then for breakfast or for lunch, it could be as, as easy as a handful of spinach into a breakfast smoothie or having a salad um, of kale and spinach or romaine for lunch or dinner. There's lots of ways to sneak more greens into your diet and add more beans and lentils, of course, to make sure you're getting your daily requirement of 400 micrograms of folate each day. I've also posted a recipe for a really simple and delicious green goddess salad dressing that you can make yourself at home sometime over the weekend maybe and store it in the fridge and use it to make um, any salad or veggie dish more delicious and more accessible during the week. I wish could, I could claim this recipe as my own, but it's actually a Hemsley and Hemsley recipe. And if you don't know who they are, you should check them out. They're like the queens of whole food cooking. So you should check out their website for lots of recipe inspiration. Well, that's it for me now. Let me know if you do make um, that salad dressing and what you think of it. And if you are able to sneak more greens um, into your day or into um, you know, the snacks and, and meals that you have, let me know. I'd love to hear from you.